In this video, I will guide you through a logical troubleshooting procedure for a faulty flame sensor in the gas furnace simulator. Begin by clicking the start button on the phone. Next, we need to proceed to the thermostat by clicking the thermostat icon at the bottom left of the page. Once at the thermostat, click on the selector switch to heat mode. This will also increase the temperature setting on the thermostat, causing the furnace to call for heat. Our next step is to observe the furnace sequence of operations. Click on the furnace icon at the bottom of the page, remove the covers from the furnace, and tape the door switch in. The door switch interrupts power to the furnace when the covers are removed, and it must be taped in during a normal troubleshooting procedure. Our next step is to see what the furnace is actually doing. If we look in, we can see that the igniter is glowing, and after a short period of time, the burners fire. However, after a three to five second period, the burners extinguish. This cycle continues on the sim. However, many furnaces in the field have a lockout feature, where after a number of ignition trials, the furnace will lock out. This can be corrected and recycled by simply turning the power off and back on to the furnace. This symptom indicates that we have a flame proving problem. In other words, the burner flames are not being proven, resulting in the IFC breaking power to the gas valve and shutting off the gas supply to the burners. This is a very important safety feature. The flame proving process used on the gas furnace simulator, as well as a majority of gas appliances in the field today, is called flame rectification. Let me explain. During an ignition trial, a small microamp signal is sent from the IFC through the sensor wire to the flame sensor shown here. When in contact with the flame, this signal will pass through the flame and change to a DC signal. This microamp DC signal will then follow the ground wire, which is shown here on the left, back to the IFC basically telling the IFC that there is a flame present. As you can see, this is not happening here. This may be the result of a faulty IFC, which is receiving an adequate signal but not recognizing it, or it could be simply something as an open ground wire or an open sensor wire. Let's check it out. Our next step is to measure the flame rectification signal in DC microamps. Remove the multimeter from the toolbox and turn the selector dial to DC microamps. Prior to inserting the leads in series to the flame sensor wire, turn the service switch off. This is an important safety step so that we're not disconnecting and reconnecting wires to a live circuit. Click on the leads and place them in series at the glowing hot spots at the flame sensor. Next, Turn the service switch back to the on position, restoring power to the unit. Once the burners have fired, let's take a look at the flame signal. As we can see, we have a zero DC microamp signal. This indicates that there is no flame signal available to the IFC, meaning the IFC is not the problem here. We've now narrowed it down to either a faulty ground wire or a faulty sensor wire. To check the ground wire, we can simply disconnect one end of the ground wire at the burner or at the IFC and measure the resistance across the wire. We should read zero ohms of resistance. Any measurable resistance or a resistance reading of infinite resistance indicates an open ground wire. We've now eliminated both the IFC and the ground wire as a potential fault, leaving only the flame sensor as our fault. To double check this, you can measure resistance of the flame sensor wire by again disconnecting the wire and measuring resistance from one end of it to the other. We should read zero ohms of resistance. At this point we can replace the flame sensor by clicking on it and clicking replace. The repair summary states $155 for the cost of this repair. We will proceed and as we can see this corrects the problem. One additional note, prior to checking the flame rectification signal 
first verify that the tip of the flame sensor is in fact in the burner flame and has not been turned or is out of position. Our last steps are to untape the door switch, replace the covers to the furnace, and click on the broom to clean the work area. And remember, if you get stuck, you can always refer to the troubleshooting flowchart by clicking the tab at the left of the page. Here I've clicked the solution key to outline the steps we've taken to solve this problem. Good luck!